continuing our uh, series of 12 o'clock specials on the music of 1977. Here's Tom Zelenka to be confronted with his first two live members of Johnny Dahl and the Scabs. Tom, this is Johnny Dahl on, uh, on my left and uh, and Peter on his left. Oh, hello John and Peter. Are these the, uh, the two gentlemen out of the band that Keith Walker fancied? Yeah. Yeah. He's got good taste. What do you mean? <laughs> Don't be vulgar. One, two, three, four! I just must clear up for the listeners the the, uh, the connection I made between Keith Walker and Johnny Dolan and the Scams. <laughs> um, Keith Walker is one of the, is a supreme producer uh, in Sydney. He also works for Double J, and um, he rather likes Johnny Dolan and the Scams, and he's been touting them, touting you blokes for months and months to us. Um, how did you get into the business? business Maybe you, the business of uh, of music. Uh, just got bored with everything else that's going on. Bored, bored, bored with everything that's going on, and like, and so we played this to try and make people more interesting, and make Australia wake up slightly instead of listening to Led Zeppelin, the status quo, boring, boring. Are you playing uh, mainly around the area that you live, like no. around? Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Do you live at Central? Because we play yeah, the Grand most close. of the time. Yeah. Like tonight, nine o'clock. Uh, and uh, none of us live at Central. No, we just play anywhere. Anywhere, you know, that we, we can play, we play. So you regard yourself as a general show business person playing this sort of music to everybody? Uh, who wants to listen? Yeah, yeah. Just no, well, it's just a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of the sort of uh, music from beginners tends to be, they tend to stick to their own territory and their own audiences uh, well, and so on. I've been playing for ten years, and that's not beginner. Oh, I see. Yeah. You've been playing that long? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, I started it's, when I was five, you see. You've got to talk into the microphone or no one at home can hear. Is oh, hello, the, microphone. The only problem at this stage. I'll turn up nice and straight. Uh, tell us more about the, the particular tracks we're going to be hearing today, because I haven't heard them. None of us. Have you heard them, Bob? No, no. Keith's just uh, had the guys really. in the studio in the last week or so and recorded them, and the tapes have just been made ready for playing on the radio. Oh, I see. Has uh, anybody heard this up at all, or is this the first playing? This is a first. Is Wrong. A first. Chris Winter plays. I'm sorry, but Chris Winter plays on the other day. Oh, yeah, but you, well... I'm just not the first. No. You know, you don't mislead anybody. Okay, let's hear some more.
world, you old man, is you who don't belong. Only poverty keeps me happy and makes me human being. Something rich me turns my head, can't stop me from seeing. What's the title of that, John and Peter? All that's going on. Sorry? All that's going on. All that's going on. How long have you been playing this sort of music yourselves? I mean, uh, how long has it been around Sydney? As far uh, as you know. Twelve months. Doing this sort. Of, uh, we're playing a lot of old songs. But we're in a changeover period, trying to write a lot more. Yeah? Uh, something more relevant. What a horrible word. And this, this sort of current style you've had for about twelve months, was it a grad you gradually found your way into it? Or you no, sort of... I put this band together with that. You know, with just a rock and roll style in mind. Like I said before, everything was so boring. And uh, just wanted it to be more interesting. Something for people to look at, dance to. And something that meant something, you know, when you're right. And the words do mean a lot to us. Mm -hmm. uh, I get the impression that a lot of, uh, a lot of the punk, certainly all of the fast punk who've slowed down would sound a lot like rock and roll. But when you speed it up, it has a totally different feel, a totally different energy about it. But... Uh, I've noticed on the, on the recent Sex Pistols album, they've got a track which which wasn't originally included on the album in America called Submission, which is a, almost a ballad for them. It's sort of a half pace number. It's almost a ballad. Don't listen to that rubbish. <laughs> okay, some more, Robert. One, two, three, four! I don't know why all the songs are so short, because when you're trying to play them on the radio, you just haven't got time to go and have a cup of tea or anything during them. Uh, boredom. <laughs> no, like, all the best to the early rock, like jailhouse rock and things. 
stay down for a couple of minutes. Yeah, but that's but it stayed down to a couple of minutes because it was recorded for commercial radio, so they could fit it in between the ads. Oh, we recorded it for commercial radio. <laughs> <laughs> They're not commercial radio isn't interesting. No, I, you know, unless it's a, a sort of a, a gimmick song or something. I mean, just those long guitar breaks, like it's just a big long wank, and it gets so boring. Mm. You know, just a nice little. <laughs> Pleasant little ditty. It's getting more and more like, uh, like the the Zelinka theory of of the folk music of the 70s is coming in, coming in because that's that's the the, the thing that 10 years ago folk singers said that they were doing was was just ch chopping the songs down to just saying something and going home. I know. I never listen to folk singers. Well, the, the, what 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 I'm saying is that you are a folk singer. Oh, thanks. So <laughs> I'll learn some Dylan stuff. No, but. But being a folk singer isn't being like Bob Dylan. That's oh. that's being an imitation folk singer. Oh, okay. Isn't oh. it? Do the Newcastle song. <laughs> Be like Bob Hudson. I like that. <laughs> Once. Bought it and everything. Now, I don't know, you know, does, does it really matter how long it is? I mean, we oh, could... it, look, it does if you're working on the radio for three and a half hours every day and you want to go and have a pee or a cup of tea or something. Oh, it's, it's very, very important. You can pee all over the tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, play too. I, I, you know, it's, if people want to listen, I get really bored listening to a record. Like, you remember those days? I don't. I was told about them. <laughs> when, uh, like, there'd be more, just about one or two songs to a side of an LP. I mean, it was really yeah, boring. In a Garda de Vida and all yeah, that, that sort of, sort of thing, stuff. Yeah, just, not that I remember it, or I don't remember mm. Iron Butterfly either. Uh, it's just so boring, you know? I'd rather listen to Presley LP, told you. Where, uh, you know, you've got about seven songs on a side, and it's different. You know, it's just entertainment music, isn't it? Somebody mm. dance to. And um, I'd like to see somebody dance for the whole side of an LP. That'd be bugger. Yeah, but, uh, hmm. I don't know, the, what, how, do you, how do you feel about disco music then, which is the music that most people like to dance to? I feel people who dance to that are morons. Why is that? They're morons. That have been, yeah. I mean, they're all going down there, down what's it, Checkers or somewhere, and they're going. Oh, this is, yeah, my latest jeans. They're trendy. This is what I bought, and they're all showing off their different clothes. And again, they they think it's a in thing, or well, they're wrong. And discos won't last. They can't because they're stuffed completely. Anyone who goes to discos are morons. They're, they're just morons. Crazy people. Sorry, but they are. You were talk talking a moment ago about dance music, and a lot of people sort of just would come to see you just to dance, right? Yeah. They may also just go to discos just to dance. But yeah, you know, that's the crazy section of the community. Well, I don't know. I mean, if there's... Uh, Do you go to discos? If there's a... Uh, if the only place that you can go to dance in, in your area is a disco... Well, they can't. Does that mean you've got to choose between being a moron and yeah, not they dancing? Stay, they can stay changing home. now. That's like there was yeah. nothing for them to dance to because of all these mm. heavy metal freaks. But uh, now there's a few bands that you can go along and dance to. Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't have even bothered with disco music. Mm. Oh, yeah, well, I, that's why I see that the reason discos have come in is because there, there was a whole move of people who wanted to be great concert performers, you know, and do their mm. own music, man. You know, we're, we're creative artists. We're not playing for people to dance to. Yeah. <laughs> Wank. And, uh, and, and so you've got people who, you just had a, a, you know, people used to go somewhere to dance and they couldn't, and so they stopped going and... Discos came in. Yeah, yeah but it's changed. So what sort? What sort of? Uh, I'm an old foxtrot man myself. What's What's the sort of basic dance Pogo. structure Pogo. involved with Pogo, with sure. your kind of music? What's Pogo. that? Uh, just jump up and down like you're on a pogo stick without a pogo stick.
Oh, that's a very nice one. What's that called? Blow my nose. Oh. Well, that's a that's a party stuff for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, our bass guitarist wrote it. Uh, he kind of writes books. He doesn't write songs, and he's got millions of words in it. And that's just one of the lines. Blow my nose. So I call it. How many in the group? Four. Was it always this, the same group for twelve uh, months? Or did have another guitarist once, but he left. We can't. Now we just got the guitar bass. I used to play sort of LA country rock, and now you you lost oh. your guitarist and you play punk. No, no, it was no. punk. It was like we're doing the same things. Uh, we weren't doing the same originals because we hadn't written them, but we're doing <laughs> we're doing the uh, like things like my generation and, and you know all those old things. And uh, he left. He didn't like uh, <laughs> music, so he left. And we still like it, so we stayed. I think. How are you going to cope with making your first million? Uh, I know, I just, yeah, I'm a normal capitalist pig. I'll probably buy everything I hate. Now, uh, yeah, probably open up a disco. <laughs> and before you get to become a, a millionaire, uh, what, what is your next, have you got a, an idea for a single or one of these you fancy to, be, to put out as a single? Yeah, I fancy Lucky Country. All right, well, let's have a listen to that. These, these are all recorded in the, the, at uh, the Double J Studios by Keith Walker, so nothing available on record at the moment. It's interesting you mentioned a single there, Tom. That's, that seems to be the, the trend in Britain to, to releasing singles. Why, why would you do a single? Why not? I mean, but... When, well, I mean, why? You, you, when you go out to play at a pub or somewhere, you go out to play and so that people can dance and that kind of thing. So why would you do a single? What's the reason for doing it? Money. <laughs> you can't make money out no, of singles. No, it's just, it, it gets it to a lot of people who can't come into the city. Mm. Like at the moment, it's stuck. Uh, people out in the suburbs won't risk with a punk band yet. They're just afraid in case anything happens to their nice pretty little halls. So it's in the city, like if people say out in uh, Blacktown, Penrith, can't get in. Really, I mean, it's a lot of money for them. I just, you know, really worried about people having to pay a lot to see bands. Mm. I mean, do you keep your prices down? We do, yeah. At the grand, it's only dollar fifty. I mean, yeah, anyone can afford that, and that's just sort of covers costs, like for posters and things. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't like anyone has to pay more than that. Yeah, you know, it's just too much. Not for our audience, because they're all on the dole, <laughs> so to speak. How come? How come people who are who are on the dole and supposedly living on bread and Coca-Cola have got the energy to to dance to this sort of music? Uh, sit around doing nothing all week, so yeah. your time. Oh, they save it up, do they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to bring your doll form in. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tom. Uh, I'd just like to hear this track, which is going to be the next single. country and that's uh, that's it for me and that's it for them really um, Chris is here Chris isn't paying any attention no he's just I, wandering around listen have we got have we got some more um, music on the tape can no. we uh, 
No, no more tapes. None oh. left. Oh dear. I well, mean, there's one more, but this it's not has been one machine. of the shortest twelve o'clock special I've ever partaken in. I know. In. Well, that was that was my complaint. I just, I, you know, as I said, not only the the cup of tea and all that sort of thing. Doesn't doesn't your uh, guitarist ever get the urge to go off on a on a great flight of notes? Mm. Talk, do you? <laughs> no, no. Sort of just playing really fast. It's good fun mm. doing that. Have you worked in bands before where? where the guitarist has been expected to be Jimi Hendrix for 20 minutes at a time? Yeah, but uh, I just used to play the same lick over and over and over again. Mm. Mm. And that impressed people all right, didn't it? Uh, not really. They sort of tended to sack me. <laughs> <laughs> given, that you, uh, play all the, given that all these songs are all very short and you play fairly fast, do you have a, a long set when you play them and you play for a couple of hours and therefore play 30 or 40 tracks? Or do you uh, yeah, we just roll on forever, <clears throat> playing off short. But yeah, it's good. I mean, we don't have a big long break in between songs or anything. So I mean, if people watch us, it's not boring for them. Just lots of little songs. But there's lots in there. You know, millions. And, and I assume you don't write all your own stuff. You probably, probably play a lot of other people's songs as well. Oh, in yeah, general a lot. Like, definitely. Easy Beats. Our loved ones, people like that. Early Australian bands. Loved ones? Oh, yeah. what wonderful influences to draw on. Just love them to death. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They they did some beautiful stuff. But they, I mean, you talk you're talking about sort of R and B almost with yeah with the loved ones. Uh, a lot of their stuff wasn't just R and B. Like they mm. did what was it Blueberry Hill and stuff like that. But they also did Ever Loving Man and yeah. things like that. Even 1960s punks. Thought they were. I don't think it's Keith Lamb. I saw on TV. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was John English. Mm. And he's, he was saying, like, he was in a punk band 15 years ago. And uh, you reckon it's Keith was, but I don't think Keith was, because he's a bit strange. Uh, you know, they were in sort of the same thing. Mm. It's just new. As soon as people understand it a bit more, then they won't be so frightened of it, and they'll let us down to the suburbs. Well, what have, what have, what have the, the punk bands in Sydney got in common, except that um, they don't get to uh, play at very many venues and things? Uh, nothing. Each band's totally different in its own way. Mm. Just nothing in common. Tommy and Dipsticks, they're in common with us, because they're pretty similar. They're about the only ones. Nobody else is like us. Yeah. Wonder why. Well, 25 to 1, time for Chris.